From assaults taking place on ice to paramedics dropping a player off a stretcher, these are the craziest moments in NHL history. And to start things off, we have the wildest ending to a game in NHL history. Patrick Steffen is one of the worst first overall picks of all time. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Patrick Steffen, you should be embarrassed for what you just did. That does not belong in the National Hockey League. And if that's not bad enough, he's mostly remembered for this play. You just had to take a page out of Happy Gilmore and tap it in to give the Stars an easy win. Instead, this happens. And Hemsky's loose! Hemsky, he scored! Can you believe what we just saw? Speaking of Happy Gilmore, at number 19, we got a play that even the iconic Adam Sandler character wouldn't have tried on the ice. Marty McSorley had a solid NHL career, but tarnished his reputation with this idiotic slash to the head of Donald Brashear. That's assault, brother. Up there as well. Ooh, McSorley slashed Brashear and caught him in the helmet. McSorley was suspended for the final 23 games of the season and didn't play again in the league. You could say he wasn't McSorley missed. While McSorley's punishment was a record 23 game suspension at the time, Vancouver Canucks Todd Bertuzzi took on ice aggression to another level in our number 18 moment. Tensions were already high coming into the Canucks and Colorado Avalanche game in March of 2004, as Steve Moore injured Canucks star Marcus Naslin in a game less than a month prior. Upon further review, this much is clear. Nasland was in a vulnerable position. With the Avalanche up 8-2 in the third period, Bertuzzi grabbed Moore from behind and straight up mugged him, sucker punching him and driving his head into the ice. And piling on is Andre Nikolishin and everybody's into it. Now we get a line brawl. And Hedberg wants out. Moore suffered three fractured neck vertebrae and never played again. And it's ended with this ugly incident and Todd Bertuzzi out of the game. Moore sought as much as $68 million in damages in a civil lawsuit, and both parties settled out of court seven years later. All right, that's a little dark, but we got something a little lighter at number 17. The San Jose Sharks trailed 3-0 in Game 7 of their first round playoff series against the Vegas Golden Knights, but were given a five-minute power play after Cody Eakin laid a questionable hit on Captain Joe Pavelski. But of more concern right now is... Captain Joe Pavelski. San Jose scored four goals with the man advantage. A young star in the game. Thomas Hurdle to flex the Eric Carlson shot. Up. And ended up winning one of the wildest game sevens ever in overtime. That Sharks win was unforgettable. Quite the opposite of Claude Giroux, who comes in at number 16. The Philadelphia Flyers hit a home run with their selection of Giroux in the first round of the 2006 NHL draft. Philadelphia selects from Gatineau of the Quebec Junior League. But you wouldn't have known it at the time based on Bobby Clark's announcement of the pick. A kid, a kid won't be afraid to give it to Clark if, either. If, if there's a kid whose last name is Forget. But it would be great to forget our number 15 moment. Alex Ovechkin is arguably the greatest goal scorer in NHL history, but he couldn't be more out of his element in this commercial. And does was over 600 cars, trucks. This will haunt your dreams. It's gonna be on YouTube for sure. For sure, man. I'm gonna kill you. Now, hockey can be a dangerous sport, but our number 14 moment shows that bad things don't just happen on the ice. Dallas star legend and Hockey Hall of Famer Mike Madonna was concussed after this vicious headshot from Marc Messier. And there, we got him in the head with his shoulder. He got position on Madonna and wow, he looks out. out. But to add insult to injury, check out this stretcher job from the paramedics. Uh, the eyes open. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Come on, man. You had one job. At number 13, we have one of the more intimate moments in NHL history, as Brad Marchand gives new meaning to the phrase, gave a licking to the opposition. That's just not cool, man. There he is again. Hey, what are you going to do? Drop the... <laughs> Uh, let's move past that. Roberto Luongo comes in at number 12. Roberto Luongo took an extended bathroom break during a playoff game. Although perhaps this should have been number two, because that's exactly what the Vancouver Canucks goaltender was doing as he missed the start of overtime in game five of the 2007 Western Conference Final. What was up with that bathroom break during the playoffs? A bad shrimp or? Uh, I can divulge my secret, but uh, let's just say I had a little bit of a stomach problem. At number 11, goaltender Thomas Vokun takes one of the most vicious slashes to the head in NHL history. Here it is, Ballard out of frustration, going to hit the goalpost and catches Vokun. From his own teammate? Damn. And Vokun is bloodied, oh my goodness. What happened there after? 
after the play. I thought you were supposed to protect your goalie. Speaking of protection, the glass at Philadelphia's arena was useless in protecting this fan in our 10th crazy moment. Down he goes, glass breaks, and now we have... Look, if you're trying that hard to get at one of the toughest players in NHL history, you deserve the beating. Five minutes for being an idiot. On the other hand, if you're in the stands far from the ice, you probably aren't expecting to get into it with a player. As O'Reilly is out into the stands, and this is going to be something. O'Reilly's into the stands. Let alone have one beat you with your own shoe. As general manager of the New York Islanders, Mike Milbury made some awful trades and signings. But this has to be the craziest thing he's done in his career. Now, our eighth craziest moment exposes the joke that is the NHL All-Star Game. In 2016, fans voted John Scott. John Scott. He's got a breakaway. Chasing him is Duchesne. Scott and Scott. A goon with just five goals in 286 career games into the game as sort of a protest. Scott proceeded to score a couple of goals and was named All-Star MVP. The league implemented a rule to prevent this the following season because apparently they hate fun. From one John to another, our seventh craziest moment is the wildest story in all professional sports. Then that he has signed off with the lawyers and all that, now all it needs is league approval and John Spano will be the official owner of the New York Islanders. Now I've heard of petty fraud, but faking your way into owning a franchise is a whole new level of absurdity. It became clear to us that to ensure our success and achieve those goals, we needed to change the majority owner of this franchise. I am pleased to announce that we have found that individual, and his name is John Spano. John Spano's brief ownership of the Islanders really lends credence to George Costanza's famous advice. It's not a lie if you believe it. Fans have thrown some of the weirdest things on the ice. Octopus, rats, hamburgers, snakes, and waffles. But those are nothing compared to our six craziest moment. Is that? Yeah, that's a dildo. These dudes don't get paid enough. It's one thing to see a fake penis on the ice, but if Joe Thornton had ever scored four goals in a game, fans might have seen a real one. Number five, Thornton was asked post-game about his teammate, Tomas Hertel's unbelievable between-the-leg goal, his fourth of the game against the New York Rangers. Years of age, that's confidence. Rangers players, including goalie Martin Baron, took issue with the goal, believing it was disrespectful considering the score. Thornton, by his own admission, would have celebrated even harder. I'd have my you know, it's nice to see. What the? What are you? I'm not sure why he would bring a rooster on the ice, but okay. I'm also not sure on how this script got so sexual, but let's move on to the top four. Sean Avery has given fans plenty of crazy moments over the years. Psychopath. But few are as memorable as his comments about his ex-girlfriend, Elijah Cuthbert, who dated a couple other NHL players. It's become like a common thing in the NHL for guys to fall in love with my sloppy seconds. And is now married to former Toronto Maple Leafs captain, Dion Phaneuf. All right, I thought I said enough with the sexual moments. Moving on, our third craziest moment again involves the NHL All-Star Weekend. In a fresh change of pace, the league had Snoop Dogg perform a DJ set at center ice prior to the skills competition. The Dog Fathers started with an uncensored version of the next episode. Hold up, kids learned a lot of new words that day. Now, Maple Leafs fans are among the most tortured in all professional sports, but no moment was worse than our second craziest moment. It's bad enough to lose an emergency replacement goalie, but it's even worse when the goalie is a 42-year-old who drives a Zamboni for your farm team. 42 years of age, emergency support goaltender will be forced into service here for the Hurricanes. Our number one moment proves that karma is really a, uh, well, you know. In one of the most incredible one in a million moments in NHL history, this fan experienced instant karma for laughing at Steve Sullivan, who had just been cut open on his nose earlier in the game. Sullivan scored a pair of shorthanded goals moments later, but that wasn't as sweet as the revenge he got on the fan. Not only did the dude get hit with an errant puck, but Sullivan happened to be on the ice and taunted him for it. And, uh, you know, I think, I think his, uh, his girlfriend thought it was pretty funny also. For the serendipity for the puck to go over the glass and hit the same guy in the head, uh, that's when you know that there are such things as hockey gods. 
Now, I bet you didn't know about some of these moments, but check out this video right here. Because these stars do things that are just straight up unbelievable. Go ahead. What are you waiting for?